Hi, <laughs> my name is Karen Clark and I'm coming to you from the Norva Center. This is uh, my first painting video and uh, you should have a kit at home that was uh, supplied to you by the Norva Center and the funding for that kit and for this video comes from the Safe at Home program uh, sponsored by the province of Manitoba government. So today you're going to be doing an acrylic still life with me going on this big adventure and uh, I'll guide you through the steps from the pencil drawing through to the final stage. We'll be layering the acrylic paint in a thin to thick style which uh, can cross over to oil paint if that's something you're interested in. This is a pretty simple subject. It's just the single avocado and some shadow on the wall and on the tabletop. And uh, I'm hoping that that will be something that uh, you'll enjoy and perhaps go on to do other paintings. Okay, so to start, I just want to show you here on my uh, easel, this is the subject that we're working on right here. This is the avocado. Right here, you can see, let's take a look at this subject just for a moment and notice some things about it. Uh, one of the things I really appreciate about the avocado after painting it was that it has a dark edge of the peel, shell, what do you call that? I don't know, hey, the skin. The skin of the avocado is quite dark and gives this beautiful dark line and you'll notice too how the colors here change as you get closer to the pit. Another thing to notice is the shape of the shadow that's being cast by the pit and the shape of the shadow that's being cast by the actual avocado. In this reference you'll notice that my angle here of this line is um, not strictly horizontal, but we're going to adjust that. I'm just going to make it a horizontal for you guys, uh, just to, for simplicity's sake. However, if you want to make it at an angle, you can. It's okay. You're in charge. So this is the final avocado. By the time we get through this video, this is what you're going to end up with, something like this. Okay. So where do we start? In your kit, you will have a package of 12 colors and those 12 colors, for the most part, you'll just be using your uh, yellow, blue, red and white and I will have um, included in there a one ounce container of burnt umber um, along with the rest of the colors you have. You have two pieces of canvas set, um, so there's uh, one piece for you to secure onto a stiff a background like this, maybe a piece of map board, maybe a, I don't know, an old book cover, something that will fit this 8 by 10 piece of paper. And just secure it. You don't have to uh, uh, work too hard on that. You can just secure it on the four corners. I just like this kind of format. I use painter's tape because it's easier to get off, especially if I go over top with my acrylic paint, which is a plastic, and so when it dries, it really adheres tight to this stuff. So when you go to take it off, the painter's tape is probably the best. That being said, if you've got masking tape, even clear tape, it doesn't matter. Just use something to get it on the board. So first off, we want to do a little bit of a pencil drawing. And then we're going to tone the ground, which is color the paper. I like doing my pencil drawing on the white because sometimes when, depending on the color ground you have, you can't really see your pencil marks very well. So here we go. So what I'm drawing here is just the basic shapes. I'm not um, looking for detail. I'm not going to put in this little uh, sort of cut into the flesh of the avocado. I'm not interested in that right now. I'm just interested in the basic flat shapes. So there's my tabletop there, and like I said, I straightened it out for you. Avocado's got a beautiful, beautiful shape. And the other thing about when you're a painter, 
your drawing is uh, important. But as the painting evolves, you'll change all of that. And so there's no need to get all precious about your drawing. That being said, a good drawing is really useful for a good painting. Okay. That's pretty well it. So now that I've got my drawing here, I might um, start to get kind of precious with it. So stop right there. Uh, now I'm going to tone my ground. And the color I like to use for toning my ground is uh, red. It doesn't support the colors in my reference, but what it does is, I think, uh, make my painting more lively at the end point. When I have a bit of this red peeking through on the edges, when I have some transparent paint and the red kind of glows through, I like that look. And so um, I'm painting that way. You could use a ground that is uh, more supportive, perhaps, of the actual color of the avocado. And so in that case, I think the choice I would make for that kind of ground would be to use maybe a pale uh, kind of gold color, a yellow ochre with white. And uh, it's quite likely that you have a yellow ochre in your little kit. So if you mix that with white and use that for toning your ground, um, you'd have a totally different look, but it would support the mixing of these colors, probably better than the red would. So here we go. I have um, my cadmium red, and you guys have a little tube of that. And I'm going to mix it onto um, a yogurt lid like this. And I actually like to work um, a bit of a wash. So you see I just poured some water in there. And I'm going to use a palette knife to mix this up. You could use your brush. You don't have to. Um, popsicle stick, anything like that. So when this wash goes onto my paper, my canvas set there, you're going to notice that it's actually not that bright of a red, it's more pink. And I like that. And now I'm going to ask my assistant to get me some water. <laughs> Thanks. If I had a sock puppet, that would work too. OK, so you can see that my drawing has actually pretty well disappeared. But if you're up close, you can see it quite well. Some people, even when they're doing the underpainting, they'll actually um, you know, do the shapes, the general shapes. Um, they'll use their brush strokes to kind of indicate where the object is. And you can do that. Thank you. So that's going to take a little time to dry. And while that's happening, um, what I'm going to do is uh, mix up some threads. For We're going to first start with the background. And um, sorry. We're going to first start with the burnt umber. And we're going to uh, reconfirm or reestablish our drawing with burnt umber. And we're going to use that small brush that you have. It's a round. And, um, after we get that established, then we'll be putting in our darkest darks. Here we are. Um, I've just put some burnt umber up here on my palette. Um, you guys won't be working vertically like this. I've just got it set up so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just making a bit of a wash here. And I have a, 
a cloth on my hands just so I can kind of keep this from getting too drippy. Uh, so I'm just going to reinforce the drawing here. So, so far, so good, hey folks? And you can see that the drawing has become uh, not so important anymore, right? Uh, you can see that with the paint, I can change so much. Okay, so that's my basic structure of my painting right now. And uh, the next step would be to put in my darkest darks. And I'm not going to put them in uh, with anything other than just my burnt umber here. So we know that uh, this part of the pit is quite dark under here. We know that the light is coming at this from this angle above and to the left. So we want to make sure we honor that. I'm using my round here because this is quite a small uh, format, but I could, for this larger space over here, I can pick up my larger brush, which for some of you will be what's called a flat. And you notice that I, I wet my brush first, so it's kind of a bit of a thirsty brush when I go to pick up paint. And you should have two glasses of water going here. Uh, one for picking up clean water with and the other one for cleaning your brush. I'm just going to put in some detail here. I like this kind of lumpy sort of edge and I want to make sure I don't forget about that. All right, the next step then is to, I can add in some of my lights but uh, what I'm going to do right now is uh, mix up the rest of my palette, put it up here on the, and we'll do some color mixing. Okay, so now we have our avocado drawn on the format and we have the uh, darkest darks on there. So we're going to mix up some uh, light colors for using in the background. And um, some people will um, use lightest lights at this point after they've done their darkest darks, but I'm just going to go right through to the background and get you to mix some threads. Now the color we're mixing is kind of a gray blue and um, you might be surprised by the colors that we uh, I choose to use to mix uh, what I want. Anyway, we're going to be using burnt umber and white and a bit of your blue.
So what I'm doing here is I'm mixing a thread. So I'm going from my darkest to lighter. Actually, I'll lighten this up a bit too. And my darkest value there, I'm going to leave it as having a lot of blue in it. And uh, then I can work across here from uh, the darkest to the lightest. So if we're looking at the canvas here, we realize that the light is coming here from here. So this will be the lightest part of my background. And as I get across, I can have fun by incorporating some of the darks. And I don't, um, what I would like for you guys at home to be able to do is to uh, just kind of feel free here, okay? Uh, we're not trying to make a smooth drywall background. You're not painting a kitchen cabinet or anything like that. So the marks that your brush makes, uh, let them live on the canvas. What the heck does that mean, right? And again, um, you can see that the shape of my avocado, I can cut back into it. If I think it's too chubby or if I think it's not thin enough, I can change the shape of it by uh, working the background. So I'm going to pick up uh, one of my other threads here and bring it in. Um, you'll notice I'm using a bit of a X pattern to uh, spread my paint around. So I'm going to back up and take a look at what I'm, what I'm seeing here. Um, I like the fact that I can see the difference between these colors. Yeah, you may um, want to uh, smooth that edge out and have it be a gradual kind of transition. And at this point where the paint is wet, you can make that happen if you wish. Um, for you guys at home, something that you might need by now is a little spray bottle of uh, water to spray on your paint because acrylic will dry out and, uh, as you're working. So I picked up my darkest value of my gray that I have here and I'm putting it in this corner and I'm picking up my other colors and using them as well. I want some variety. But what am I going to do with this dark shadow? How am I going to make that work? Hmm. Well, it's gray too, right? So it will have to be an even darker gray than this one. So I'm going to pick up a bit of my burnt umber. And that's a bit too brown for my taste. I'll bring in some blue. Well, you know what? I'm going to use it. And if I don't like it later on, I'll fix it. So this is going to be my gray shadow. And it, it may look kind of hokey going in there right now, although actually I think it looks just fine. 
Now again, we know that the skin of the avocado is kind of rough, and uh, there we go. So the next thread I want to mix is going to be a, a yellow ochre, and I'm going to do the foreground here. Um, and I'm leaving the main event, the avocado, till the end. That's the, the last uh, kind of thing we're going to take on, the last, um, the object itself. Because I want you to use your paintbrush and kind of get a little bit free with it. Um, and hopefully that's what you're doing. So the yellow ochre I'm going to build out of my yellow, my red. Um, I'll be using a bit of burnt umber, uh, probably some white. Uh, and likely some blue. You almost always mix any color out of those three primaries. All right, pick up a little red here. And right away, you've got some really nice orange, which um, I think I would probably want to use. So I don't want to lose that. Uh, the reason I'm picking up Mm -hmm. I'm picking up this paper towel or um, you know some old t-shirts or something like that is to clean my palette knife so I don't poison my colors. You can see I poisoned my burnt umber already. I'll have to be be awake to that fact. So I'm gonna mix a bit more of this. And you notice I'm not using a whole whack of paint. Like it's your your little kit will probably go a long way. You can do oodles of paintings. So I want to tone this orange down, and the complementary color to orange is blue. So whenever you want to dull something up, you add the complement. Look at that magic, eh? Ooh, that's dull. That's too dull. Yuck. Oh well, it'll come in useful somewhere. Maybe in the shadow area, right? So I need something in between and something a little more gold. Now, this isn't the only way to be um, mixing your colors. Uh, some people mix them right on the canvas. Don't worry about prepping here on the, on the uh, palette. And truth be known, I do an awful lot of that myself, like right on the canvas, picking up whatever color on my brush and um, ending up with a pretty messy looking uh, palette, that's for sure. Get little pots of this mixed here, a little pot of this mixed over there.
Okay, I'm looking to mix sort of a green gold here. There we go. Okay, so I know it's lightest over here and it gets darker as we go across. So I'm going to start with my lightest uh, value that I mixed. I'll put that in there. And you can see I'm mixing colors on the, on the actual canvas. You can see that's happening there. Um, I want to build up a bit brighter over here. And my orange will lose some of its, it won't be as vibrant because I'll have white on my paintbrush. So I need to clean that before I pick up that orange again. Orange is kind of dangerous when you add um, white to it, you almost always end up with a kind of a peach color or uh, and if, if that's not what you're after, it quickly goes there when you add white. Now oh, here's where I think I might be able to make good use of this, uh, this dark that I mixed earlier. Yeah, I think that works. So I'm going to uh, lighten up that shadow color a bit, I think, and use it in here. This 
So I can keep uh, building my layers of color here. I can, uh, for that foreground there, uh, mixing in a bit of burnt umber, can take it, keep it more brown. Might mix some in here. Yeah, that helps out. Now I got more of a burnt color there. I like that. And so I'm layering these colors on top of each other. And you can see where the white is still wet over there, so it's kind of coming into my burnt orange color. Okay, so I could work away at that for quite a while, getting it to be uh, more consistent or less. I kind of like the way it's broken up right now. Um, and so now we're going to start the main event, the avocado itself. So for this, we're going to be mixing strings of green. And the colors that we're going to be using to mix the, the greens are uh, everything that's on the palette right now. So we'll need our burnt umber and our yellow, which will mix um, a really, well, kind of like those avocado colored um, appliances from the 50s. Wow, no, 70s, I guess. I'm not that old. <laughs> from the 70s, those avocado colors. And um, so that's what we'll get from the burnt umber and the yellow. And then we'll mix a more vibrant green and we'll be using our good friends the primaries to mix those. Okay, this is my good friend, the spray bottle, and it's from uh, my good friend, Patty, at the back. Thanks very much, Patty. This is useful to give your paints a bit of a extra life, extra time. Uh, people cover acrylics with saran wrap um, to try to save them and go from session to session, or you can buy something called a wet palette. You can actually build your own, um, too. You don't have to go and buy something really expensive for that. Anyway, very useful item, the spray bottle. Failing that, you can always pick up a bit of water in your fingers and give it a splat. Okay, the threads we're going to mix for the green, as I promised, are going to be uh, this avocado is going to be mixed with are created with burnt umber and yellow, which is quite a surprise to some people. But if you think about it, the color brown is made with quite a bit of blue. And so when it gets combined with yellow, you're going to end up with this, which is a very useful green. Um, really useful for a landscape. Uh, here in northern Manitoba. So we're going to mix a couple of threads of that. Okay, so that's one green. 
Another green is to use your blue. Use your blue. And check this out. Okay, right away this becomes incredibly, incredibly vibrant and um, almost impossible to use unless you're going into some kind of pop art kind of style, which is just fine. But you can see it's, it's unnatural, so it's very, not the kind of color we want to use all on its own. Uh, so we want to tone that down with a little bit of burnt umber and um, a bit of red. Uh, red is your friend here when it comes to mixing greens because it's the complement to green. And so you can see right away that's starting to become a more reasonable color. So I'm looking for a deep dark green and I'm starting to get there. Uh, this is the kind of green that I would use on the shell or the skin of the avocado. Um, and perhaps that's good enough, maybe a little bit burnt umber, maybe a little bit Red. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, there's also a kind of creamy yellow that's around the uh, the flesh of the avocado, so I'd like to have something of that ready to go, but we'll get going with this. So if you can find your, um, you should have two brushes in your kit, one is a smaller one. So if you can pick up that small one, and I just want to establish the, uh, the shell. Now, you know already from working with the background and so on that uh, this may be going on a little bit too wide or you know, too, too thick of an edge or something, but I can, I'll be able to go back with my other colors and modify that as I go. So it's a kind of a rough um, skin, so I'm not trying to be really um, smooth with the way I'm applying the paint here. So you can see that that green that we made is uh, still maybe a little bit too vibrant. That means we'll just add a little bit of red to tone it down a little further and maybe uh, work it into this edge. But for now, um, I'm going to leave that as it is. So I have Need some more yellow. So I'm mixing up that light flesh color and I'm going to work that around in here.
And um, you know that you don't have to, at this stage, be absolutely perfect in your where uh, the paint is coming up against the next value. You can fix that later. You can um, make it really tight if you want. I like to leave little bits of red, maybe not quite as much as what I have showing right now, but I like to have uh, a little bit of that happening. So this is um, one that I've continued on a little bit further, and you can see like the different layerings that's happened, and that I've gone back into these areas and uh, you know worked them up, reconfirmed them, made them uh, a little uh, more sure, more more confident kind of brushwork, and um, stronger use of of the brush to see the shapes of the brush strokes. Also the shapes themselves, going back in and, and uh, confirming that yes, this is the line, this is the edge. So that's the kind of thing that happens here. So we're building um, layering colors all the time. So the first layer is this lightest layer here. Uh, I'll probably modify that a bit and then use some, some more white in it. This is where my avocado comes in. Okay, so I need to work up my, um, my shadow of the pit on the actual avocado. So I need to use um, a, dark, a dark in here. And So in this situation, I'm actually using the, uh, the dark that I painted under that burnt umber uh, shadow that I painted, and then I put on a transparent green, and so the burnt umber is actually coming through. So that's influencing how dark that shadow will be. I'm just going to let that shadow dry a little bit here, and then I'm going to confirm it a little more. I want to move on to the pit, which is actually a mahogany color. In the reference, we'll see it's covered with all the slime from the avocado flesh. Um, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm not going to put a whole bunch of that on there. 
I'm going to edit it out. And I'm going to make my pit actually pretty, pretty clean. So the colors I need for that will be my red. Because it, it does have this kind of mahogany sort of coloring in some parts. And if it's possible to incorporate some of the colors you've mixed um, previously, it just makes your whole painting kind of hang together a little bit more. Um, At this point, I would uh, say that I'm basically done. What I need to do now is to fuss around maybe with some uh, uh, edges that I want to make a little bit cleaner, or uh, especially my darkest darks. I think I need to establish this shadow a little more uh, in a more solid way. I might want to change up the color of the this is kind of a yellow looking avocado at this point, so I might layer some other greens on top. Um, so I'll do a little bit of that, but uh, the very last thing I'll be doing then will be establishing my darks in a, a really uh, strong way, the, the few that I want to make cleaner, and then applying my uh, lightest lights, my little highlights that I might have on the, the actual pod here. Um, that's it. So I'm going to paint away a little bit for now, just doing that with the darks and adding my highlights. So I've confirmed some of my darkest darks there, along here, along the edges. I put in a little highlight. Um, there's some more work to be done, I think, in terms of uh, working on the edges here. Maybe making this forest green uh, using a little bit of this. Yeah. To get that skin to be not quite so, it's very black, isn't it? Like an avocado skin. And I'm finding what I've got there is a little too green. Okay, thanks so much for watching this video and I hope it was fun for you, a little bit of an adventure for me, that's for sure. I'd like to thank the Norva Center for making the facility available here and uh, to Zach Rainville and Mike Spencer for directing and compiling the video. Also to our Manitoba government for providing the funding for this Safe at Home program. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, perhaps you even called up a friend who had a kit and put them on speakerphone and the two of you painted through it together. That would be awesome. If you have a chance and you can take a photo of your avocado and send that off to the Norvis Center, norviscenter at gmail.com, it'd be great to see uh, what people have done. And if you have some feedback for me, uh, please address it to the Norvis Center or if you see me on the street, stop, chat, let's see how it went for you. One of the things you could do is you have an extra piece of canvas set there in your kit and perhaps you might be interested in uh, doing another still life, like something simple again, like an apple or an orange, a pear, um, hop over to the co-op, you'll see lots of things there that are really wonderful to do in simple still lifes. Uh, I know that the kits that are out there coming up will be ranging from watercolor to cartooning. Uh, there's even a crumple die 
kit coming out. So stay tuned for the Safe at Home program. Thanks very much. Bye.